In this video, we'll continue our look at vectors. We will show how to add two vectors to produce what is called a resultant. We will add vectors um, with the same line of action and we will also add vectors with different lines of action, namely perpendicular vectors, right? So let's talk about vector addition. But before we do that, let's talk briefly about scalar addition. Now, we've seen previously that basically, whenever we want to add two scalars, we simply add their magnitudes together. So for instance, um, if you go to the grocery and you buy 10 kilograms of sugar, so let's call it an initial mass, M1 equals 10 kgs, right? You then go to the grocery and you buy another 5 kilograms of sugar, so let's call that mass M2. So M2 equals 5 kgs. So in total, you'd have bought M1, plus m2 equals 10 plus 5 which gives us 15 kilograms of sugar so we simply add the magnitude to give the total amount of sugar or the total mass of sugar that you would have bought so when it comes to adding vectors we simply add their magnitude together when it also when it comes to adding scalars rather we simply add their magnitude together when it comes to subtracting scalars we also simply subtract their magnitudes from this 15 kilograms of sugar, if you use up, say, 7 kilograms, then it basically means to determine how much you have remaining, you'd subtract the 7 from the 15, and that will leave you with 8 kilograms of sugar. So basically, adding and subtracting scalars um, is pretty straightforward. We simply add or subtract their magnitudes, and we keep their units. Of course, we know that we can't add or subtract two scalars which are of different um, types or different units so we can't add for instance um, a length and a time we can't add a mass and a temperature the two quantities must be the same all right now with that said we will go into or look at adding vectors so let's talk about adding vectors um, we'll talk about adding vectors of course with the first the same line of action so vectors with the same line of action right and the first type of vectors that we will look at is basically parallel vectors so we'll look at parallel vectors So if two vectors are said to be parallel, it means that they basically act, on the, they act in the same straight line, right? So parallel vectors act in a straight line and also in the same direction, right? So if two vectors are parallel, it basically means that they're acting um, along a straight line and they're acting in the same direction now when we add vectors we produce what is called a resultant right so when we add vectors we produce what is called a resultant which essentially is a single vector which produces the same effect as the vectors we added right so we'll say that we add vectors to produce a resultant right that is a single vector which produces the same effects as the combining vectors right so in a, in, a, in, a, in a short while, we'll see exactly what this means. So we're looking at parallel vectors, and let's look at a simple situation in which two vectors are parallel and, of course, acting on the same body. So let's say, for instance, we have an object. Let's say it's a box. And we have a force, F1, of magnitude 20 newtons acting in that direction from left to right. And we have another force of magnitude, let's call it F2, equals 30 newtons, which is acting in the same direction, right? 
Now, because these two forces, which of course are vectors, are acting in the same direction, to add them, we simply add their magnitudes, right? So, in, in some cases, adding two vectors can be simple as adding two scalars. It all depends on how the vectors are acting. So, in this particular case, the two vectors, in this case two forces, are acting on the same object in a, in a straight line in the same direction, and therefore to add them, we simply add their magnitudes. So, we'll say the resultant vector, so the resultant vector, or the resultant force, rather, and let's call that FR is equal to F1 plus F2. So because these two forces are acting in the same direction, um, in a straight line of course, we simply add their magnitudes, and so this gives us 20 newtons plus 30, 30 newtons, and that gives us 50 newtons. Now, are we, are, we, are we finished? No. Remember that we're dealing with vectors, and in this particular case, forces. And of course, vectors are both magnitude and direction. So when we add two vectors, not only must we state their magnitude, but their directions as well, or their direction as well. So in this case, we could say that two forces are acting to the right. And because both are acting to the right, when we add them to produce their resultant, it means that their resultant force would also be acting to the right. So we can say 50 newtons to the right. So now that we've added that, we've not only given the magnitude of the resultant, but also the direction as well. Now earlier we said that we add vectors to produce a resultant, which is a single vector, which produces the same effect as the combining vectors. Now what exactly does this mean? Now, let's say for instance, two persons were pushing this object with these two forces. So person one was pushing with a force of 20 newtons and the second person was pushing with a force of 30 newtons, right? Now the same effect would be obtained if one person came and pushed the object with a force of magnitude 50 newtons in the same direction. And this is exactly what we mean when we say that the resultant vector, in this case a resultant force, produces the same effect as the combining vectors or as the combining forces in this particular case. So we've seen from this example that whenever vectors act in the same direction along a straight line, we simply add their magnitudes together. Now, next, we will look at what I refer to as anti-parallel vectors. So we look at what are called anti-parallel vectors. So if parallel vectors act in a straight line in the same direction, it means that basically anti-parallel vectors also act in a straight line but in the opposite direction. So parallel anti-parallel vectors act in a straight line in opposite directions. Right? And as usual, we'll begin by looking at the situation um, demonstrating such, such examples. So, so let's say, for instance, we have an object, a box along the ground, and there's a force of magnitude F1 equals 20 newtons pushing from left to right, and there's a, an opposing force, F2, of magnitude 30 newtons, which is pushing in the opposite direction from right to left, right? Now, how do we add these two forces? Now, you must recall that vector quantities have both magnitude and direction. And if in one direction, a vector is taken to be positive, in the opposite direction, it must be assumed to be negative, right? So usually, whenever we're dealing with vectors in opposite directions, we usually assign one direction to be positive and the opposite direction to be um, negative and so on, right? Now, in many cases, 
we simply make the direction that the larger vector is acting in positive and that in which the smaller one is acting in negative, right? So in this particular case, um, we could say, for instance, that the 20 Newton vector force will be taken as negative, whereas the um, 30 Newton force will be taken as positive. But there's also a sign convention when it comes to vectors, which is normally applied. We normally, sometimes, we may say that from left to right is taken as being positive, whereas from right to left is taken as being negative, right? Now, whichever you apply, um, as long as you're consistent, then your answer will be correct. So for instance, if in this particular case, we treat that in the right direction as positive and that from right to left as negative, then it means we will introduce a minus sign here, right? We'll introduce a minus sign due to the fact that um, vectors in opposite directions, um, one will be assigned positive and the other will be assigned negative. And when we add them, our resultant basically will also be able to give, um, tell us which direction is acting based on the sign. So in this particular case, our resultant force Let's call it FR is equal to F1 plus F2. Now F1, 20 newtons. So this is 20 newtons plus minus 30 newtons. And so basically what we get is minus 10 newtons. Right? Now basically the minus sign there is just basically indicating the direction, right? So, because we treated, our, treated F2 as being negative and it was acting right to left, then this minus sign basically tells us that the resultant force is acting in the direction we initially assumed to be negative. So, however, when we want to state the resultant force, we could say, for instance, that FR, we could say the magnitude is 10 newtons and this would be acting to the left. Right? 